Don't let me stray. Please guide my way onto the path of my being. Allah, Subhanahu wa Taala. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, you guys, to another episode of Let's Talk. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for always uh, thank thank you for your support, and thank you for always supporting uh, Huda TV, the premier and pioneer English language Islamic channel. Inshallah, you guys know our contact information, so please get online on Facebook and support us. Support this program's Facebook page, as well as Huda TV's Facebook page. It's our way, our mechanism, our medium of exchange, so we can get into your guys' minds and let us know what you guys need to see from us you can suggest topics and new ideas for programs as well and also we recently opened up a, a, an account on Medina.com which is sort of a Facebook or Twitter but exclusively uh, Muslim which is great uh, in, in that its administrators are Muslims I believe so there is uh, uh, censored uh, content there so uh, Medina.com check it out you guys let's talk on Medina.com uh, as well and follow us there if you can inshallah also, uh, talk at huda.tv, that's our email. I do check it, so shoot me an email, and I will be happy to respond to you, inshallah. Uh, in this episode of Let's Talk Bidnilah, we'll talk about a topic that's important for youth and adults and for everyone, for all Muslim people, and that is charity. I know, especially young people, we forget about this. When we think when we'll get old, we'll give in charity, or perhaps my parents do it for me. Uh, but let's talk about it. Let's talk about how beneficial it is and why we should do it. Of course, I'm not a scholar. I'm just a TV presenter here, and I just and so I have bring some very very special guests to uh, to discuss these issues with us. And I have a professor of economics all the way from the United States, Eastern Michigan, uh, brother professor rather Mustafa Shaheen, also professor at ITT. That is uh, that is uh, ITT Technical Institute, which is very well known uh, in the United States. So he's going to give us his information about economics, macro and microeconomics, and also the Islamic perspective and how they beautifully work and blend together. And I also have with me from Al Azhar University, the South African Sheikh Zakaria Ibrahim. It's always a pleasure to have him. Assalamu alaikum to both of you. Thank you guys so much for joining for joining me on another episode of uh, Let's Talk. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Barakalafikum. You guys and uh, of course we have the studio audience you guys. Assalamu alaikum welcome uh, to Let's Talk. I look forward to I look forward to you guys, your, your feedback about charity in this episode, inshallah. I think we have a newcomer in the back there. If you could pass the mic back. Is this your first time on Let's Talk, brother? Uh, no, it's not my first time. your second time. What's your name? Muhammad. Muhammad. We're going to ask you a lot of questions about charities, benefits for society. Brother, have you traveled to different countries before? Uh, yes, only, only Turkey. You've been to Turkey, okay. So we want to talk about perhaps char charity, charitable acts that you've seen in both countries. Chari of uh, uh, Turkey and your native country, which is? Um, um, sorry again. In your, we want to talk about Turkey and your native country, which is Egypt. Egypt. Okay. Where in Egypt are you from? Um, from Cairo. That's right. Okay. Thank you, brother, so much for for the I appreciate your time, uh, Professor. Let's talk about uh, uh, charity from the economic perspective, and then we'll go to the Sheikh Zakaria talk about charity from the religious perspective. Uh, the United States government, where you reside, they have made uh, giving in charity tax deductible. They uh, do everything they can to encourage it among its citizens. However, in my opinion, we still see the act of giving charity more prevalent in the Muslim world. That's my opinion. We'll talk about that. Um, but perhaps you can give, shed some light on the econ economic impact of charity um, and how it features in and how it works into uh, an economy. Because I don't think economics, economic people, economics, uh, economists uh, figure charity into uh, national figures. Perhaps you can shed some light on that. Okay. Sounds good. I really thank so much for good points that you mentioned earlier Perfect. about the charity and about the United States because the United States is a pioneer for the charity programs over there. But we have some, you can say, some critical difference between the charity in Islamic way and in, in different countries like the United States. Okay. Let me first start about talking about the economic point about the charity here. Okay. The charity trying to make balance or equilibrium in our economy. Okay. Like right now we have a sector of our people that w they are in poverty line. Poverty line is meaning their income in the United States less than $18,000. Those people need money, need to feed their hunger. 
right. needs to have some shelters for them, needs some clothing. Right. All of these people, sometimes the government, they are not able to reach for those people. Right. Therefore, the charity programs try to, to reach for those people right. to help them. Okay. But unfortunately, over there, you may have some shortcoming from government programs. Therefore, some people, they starting to initiate some uh, charitable organization to helping the people. SubhanAllah. Yes, and you will find it in many different kinds, starting with animals, starting with the people, human, human, they may help a lot of countries like what's happened in Pakistan or to tsunami right. before all of this crisis. Any kind of special crisis or interest group, yes. they have a charity organization. Yes, they right. try to help before for this uh, program. Yeah. Uh, in economic way, if you have some problems in one sector in your economy or in your uh, sectors, we are trying to help them to increase their income. Right. If you increase their income, they will increase their consumption. Right. And if they increase their consumption, for sure, this is going to have a lot of benefit for our economy. Okay. Like right now in Egypt, for example, or any countries like Saudi Arabia or, or United States as a developed country, okay. you will find some poverty lines going to be different from country to country. Of course. But once you determine this portion of our country, they are needing some... Uh, benefits, some assistance, some okay. aid for them. Once you know it very well, you will be able to help them. SubhanAllah. Yes. Right, this right. meaning we need database yeah, yeah. for even for a Muslim country. Right. Once you have a database for a Muslim country to know the poor right. clearly right. is going to help us. You need a target. Yes. Yeah. And at the time of Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, you are talking right. about with, with the first century, he was he, he was sending a lot of police officers for the people to ask about the people. Who is the poor and who is the rich? To try to give them the charity for the people over yes, there. Right. And right now, that's what we need right now. To have a poverty line, right. to know the source of income of the people. How can I help them? Right, right. We have, to have, have a that target. In economic way, is going to help us and help our economy to be in a very good shape. Right. And we, don't, we have those figures in the States, but we don't have them here in the Middle East, I think. Yes. We yeah. don't have it in Egypt or even in Middle Eastern countries because we don't have a database. Right, right. We, that's what if you're we have a database right now in Egypt, we have a lot of unofficial sectors. Right. A lot of people, they working, they earn it income, but we do not know nothing about it. Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. The people who earn it income, the people who are working in government, they have their income, right. and you can have a lot of statistics about them yeah but for the people we sometimes in economics we call it background or underground economy or black economy right because we don't know nothing it, about it's them. unknown yes it's right. unknown right yeah. for us we do not know nothing about them therefore you cannot even count them or even you will not be able to know if they are poor or rich right but in the united states they have a lot of database about the person or about the people or about even for the community or even sometimes for sectors of your city. Right. Sometimes if I would like to buy a house in an area, you can know uh, what is the average of the income of the people in yeah. this area. Yeah. Is that good or safe to buy here or yes. there or whatever is going to help you to take a right decision. Yeah. yeah. But that's what we are going and we hope about after the Arab Spring here that we can build something Inshallah. around this one. Yes. yes. And uh, thank you so much, Professor. You are more than uh, Sheikh Zakaria, you know, here in, in the Middle East where I live, I feel uh, really astonished and surprised when I'll, walk, I'll be walking with a friend of mine, and I have a general idea how much his salary is and his family uh, responsibilities. And I know that this man perhaps doesn't have disposable income that much, you know what I'm saying? And we'll see a, a poor person on the street or something, which is a regular thing here, you know, unfortunately. And he'll dig into his pocket and give... A, you know, a significant, a small, but a significant amount of money. So it never ceases to amaze me, the generosity of practicing Muslim people and how they're willing to give their money. So we know money sometimes, it can be a proof of belief, isn't it? So we, can we talk a little bit about the generosity and how charity shows the, the it's a proof of belief also, <coughs> and it shows the generosity of the Muslim. Just, uh, before answering that question of yours is that um, 
uh, noticing, you know, I've noticed something about uh, every country that you go to, you find people who ask for money and that, you know. I think so, uh, we should start building a way where rather, instead of giving them that money, because, you yeah. know, rather buying food yes. or buying something, yeah. you will see that the people who ask yeah. for money will decrease. Yeah, because you know what I'm saying? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. This has become a business, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, people have taken advantage of the generosity of people, yeah. yes. and now you find so many people who are begging. Some people even go to the extent of taking children, and you yeah. know, we, we don't even want to go into that topic because this is a yeah. topic of charity. But right, I'm just yeah. just to touch on it, the the, the lens that yeah. people go through cutting hands of children and to make them beg yeah. for money, you know, yeah. because. I mean, if you say, if a person stands in a bus and begs, if yeah. each person gives him one pound, yeah. if he stands from the morning till the afternoon, he's encouraged to do it more. You understand? Yeah. In the day, he makes about 200 pounds. More than what we make. In a week, how much does right. he make? Right. So in a month, he's making <laughs> yeah. more, more, more yeah. money than a person that is working hard. Yeah. You know? So we need to understand the wisdom in charity. Yeah. And also, you know, I, I tell people also sometimes, I feel like even though the generosity is there and the intention of the giver, the intention of the giver was good, but then actually I f you feel like it wasn't effective. This is obviously not solving the problem. We have it's a poverty not. problem, yes. let's solve it. Like the professor said, look, in other countries, developed countries, they have a nice system, organized system with NGOs, nonprofits, and tax deductions and all this stuff. It's streamlined and it hits the target. Yeah. We're here, people are giving in this country. Like I said, to people are giving, but who are we giving it to? And is it reaching the target audience, the target uh, recipients? Uh, may Allah help us. It's not organized. Go ahead, go ahead, Professor. Let me tell you something very important, as Brother Zakaria mentioned, that the Prophet وسلم, mentioned for us, try, try to give your charity f for so close relative first. Oh, SubhanAllah. Why? Because he would like to solve your surrounding yeah. area yeah. first. If I am solving my surrounding area or circle, right. and you solve your surround circle, and the brother Zakaria solving his surrounding circle is going to make a big difference. Yeah. The Prophet mentioned more than that. And he said, if you pay your charity for your relative, you will have the reward twice. twice. One, because you pay your charity. And the other one, because you have a good relationship with your relative. Yes, yeah. Therefore, that's what we need to do. Yeah. Even because, as you mentioned earlier in your topic, that you may pay for the people in the street, as Brother Zakaria mentioned. Yeah. If you pay for the people in the street, you do not know them. Yeah. And they may go for, for somebody else and ask him for money. But yeah. if I know for my relative, and I ask my relative, I, and they will pay for my relative, you will have a very good relationship. Mm. Not even that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in his hadith, خَيْرُ صَدَقَةٍ عَلَى قَرِيبٌ كَاشِحٍ The Prophet mentioned in English, that the best charity that you will pay it for your relative who has something in his heart for you. He does love to deal with you. The Prophet asked you to pay for him first. Why? Because the Prophet would like to have a very good environment. Yeah. A lovely environment close to you. Family environment. Yeah. For family environment. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. he encourages us yeah. to starting with your relative first and then move from circle to be far and far to reach the whole society. SubhanAllah, so look at the wisdom of the, the Prophet, peace be upon him. We have all the tools here, but we didn't implement them properly. Yes, in the yes. But yes. having said that, uh, I, we have to go to a Facebook report, and then I'm going to come back to you for your for the question that I asked you. You guys, uh, we posted this question on Facebook. Uh, Brother Osama Shami working behind the scenes uh, for us here. Uh, we receive a lot of comments on this question regarding charity, a lot of shares. We always appreciate it. We're going to see those on your screen uh, now, inshallah, as soon as the brothers get those up in the control room. And there you go. There there they are. Uh, SubhanAllah. I really appreciate your comments and your likes and your shares. And I always tell you guys, please support uh, support it, uh, Facebook on Huda TV. You guys know the URL. Uh, you guys can see your comments and posts and your names there as we scroll up and down. Uh, you guys can see your pictures as well, I think, or at least your names. And uh, you guys, I just certainly appreciate uh, all of your comments and your posts. Keep it up, you guys. I, I appreciate it. Bakala fikum. Uh, Sheikh, as we said before, uh, the importance of charity. Actually, you know, perhaps we can change the question. Before the show, you mentioned something very interesting about um, Abu Bakr. May Allah be pleased with him. Yes. And this, sh you said, showed the importance of giving zakat and charity. Go ahead. Uh, uh, like, uh, we know that it is one of the pillars of Islam, firstly, you know. And we know that it's 
it mentioned, it's been mentioned in the Quran, it's been emphasized, it's been emphasized by the Sunnah practice of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And look at the companions of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because of how Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had implemented that into their hearts that Abu Bakr radiallahu an, when the hypocrites saw this as an opportunity after the, the demise of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said that we are no more paying because in the Quran it said khud min amwalihim and that is a amr and that was only for that's a <laughs> command and that was only <laughs> commanded to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and now he's no more so there's no command. Right. Look at how Abu Bakr Radlanu killed that, that claim of theirs because he knew where this one's, where yeah, they're trying to well, lead it to, you know, yeah. trying to free themselves logically. Right. And he said that I will, even if they were giving a shoelace, even if they were giving a shoelace in the time of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and if they keep that back, then I will fight them until the end. SubhanAllah. And that was cut and they understood that in Islam it will stand till the day. So we have to know this is a part of our life. Yes, yeah, SubhanAllah. Number two, uh, I, I read a beautiful hadith when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and look at how beautiful he asked I, the, uh, a sheep. There was a sheep which Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had given out in charity. And he asked us that Aisha radiallahu anh, how much is left? And she said that a shoulder is left. And she, she say, he said that no, that, three, that, that whole part of the sheep that we have given, that has remained. Because we get the profit of that in the year after. Yes, and that shoulder, there's yeah. no profit because we did not give it out. Yes, so no. people need to understand that when, because a lot of people feel that, you know, when he looks at, I have to give charity, I'm losing out, you know. He feels that his money is being decreased or right. reduced, you right. know. Right. In actual fact, you have opened up a bank account in the year after and you are storing in that bank account. Yes, because you, you, are, you only have the money which you consume when you buy food every day. Right. That is the money which you own. Secondly, the money which you buy clothes with to cover yourself and your body. That is your second uh, money which you own. And your third money is the money which you give in charity. Other than that, when you die, if you could have a glimpse of how your family fights for your money, <laughs> that same money that you have been trying to protect yeah, and, and not correct. giving out, your whole family is fighting over who's going to earn this and who's going to get this possession and who's going to get. So at the end of the day, it's important to give out, uh, worry about, rather accumulating for yourself in the year after, yes, okay. purifying your money because you, the zakat purifies your money and also it gi gives you that sentiment to have feelings for your Muslim brothers and, and sisters and all the people that are suffering around the world. Like you said, Sheikh, you can't take it with you. You want to collect it, but you can't take it with you. <laughs> yes. Let me go take a short break. You guys at home, stay tuned for more. Let's talk. We'll be right back, inshallah. for halqa or dhikr especially in the masjid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide us with the following nazalat alayhim as-sakina tranquility you feel like peace of mind comfort for your eyes whenever you're sitting in the halqa in the masjid ghashiyatuhum ar-rahma Allah covers this gathering with his mercy wa haffatuhum al-malaika that was stated in the previous hadith and the angels will surround them wa dhakarahum Allah fi man 'inda don't miss Dr. Muhammad Salah's all-new weekly program, Gardens of the Pious, live from 9 to 10 p.m. Mecca time every Wednesday night, only on Huda TV. Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to Let's Talk. You guys, how about that crane movement? MashaAllah, the channel's improving. Thank you, brother Ihab Abu Yazid, for that. Uh, uh, Professor Mustafa, uh, economics in the United States, and you know, macroeconomics, really the global economy. Uh, let's talk about it. Sheikh Zakaria mentioned something very nice in the point, and you mentioned it in the first segment. The Prophet, peace be upon him, taught us to give and to kind of take care of our surrounding circle first, and everybody will do that, inshallah, and it creates a better society and family life. 
But sometimes we see perhaps a, perhaps a flaw when we do see uh, nonprofit organizations, people giving in charity in the United States to organizations that have some sort of really uh, niche or restricted interest group or serve something very, very far away um, without taking care of the home base. So is it more, let's talk about perhaps from the economic perspective, the importance of giving in charity in your locality and how that benefits the community. This is a very good point. Thanks so much for this point. Okay. But first of all, I would like to mention for Zakir, Sheikh Zakaria, as mentioned, he's talking about zakah, and zakah is the third pillar of Islam. Okay. And the Quran mentioned for 82 verses in the Quran, and the combine between the praying and zakah, in 82 verses. Yeah, that's funny, yeah. Because the part of economy right now is based upon our life. But as you mentioned in your question right now, a lot of the great scholar in Islam, they said, is not accepted to move your zakah to another country. And they said, if you would like to pay your zakah, you should pay it firstly for your community, for your local community. But because the United States is very rich, and it has a lot of diversity from the people, the people coming from Arab world or from Indubek or from Asian or whatever, all of these people, they have the passion and they would like to help their country. Right. Uh, therefore, they try to send their money or their zakah to another country. This right. was accepted. Right. But when the crisis happened in the United States in 2007, financial crisis in 2007, most of the imam of the masjid, they ask the people, please don't transfer your money back to your country. Keep the money here. We have a lot of poor people, a lot of poor Muslims close to us, and we need to help them. Oh. And therefore, as you know, a lot, of, a lot of problems, a lot of crimes happen in the United States, especially in the poor yeah. community. Right. If we try to pay our zakah, it's going to make a big, big difference. Yeah, of course. Let me give you this happen. This happened with me. Go ahead. I was in San Francisco three years ago. Allah. That's where I'm from. Go ahead, Sheikh. Yes. <laughs> I was in San Francisco. We have a, a very good masjid over there, uh, four-story building over there, and they have a church in the front of the masjid. It was on Sunday, and I found a lot of people, they stand in a, in a very row, they asking for a benefit from the church. Yes. And the church is trying to help the people over there. It's called the Grace Cathedral or something. They yes. It's very tender line. Yes, yes, over there, in the front of the masjid, yes, in yeah. the opposite way in the masjid, yeah. over there. I went to my brothers and asked them, we can do that too. We can help our community right. from our money. And that's what we need to show the people that we are generous, that we are trying to solve our problems. And a lot of right now, alhamdulillah, after a lot of like what happened in uh, New Orleans, yes, New Orleans over there. Katrina. In Katrina over there. Yeah. The Muslim organization, the charitable organization, they're starting to go there and feeding the hunger over there. They have bottles of water over there to try to help the community, to tell our community at large that we are one. Right. All of us are, are helping each other. Yeah. We're trying to give a very good and successful image of the Islam yeah. over there. Yes, yes that's Allah. what we need. This is going to have a lot of benefits in the long run in economic way, in our community, in our people, even for outreach. Yeah. When you are trying to help the community, and the people will understand that you have a message, yeah. that you are helping us. Yeah, we can't be in a cocoon, and, and we have to break out and sure, interact with sure. the community. Yeah. You have to be out for the people, to outreach. Yeah, subhanAllah. To the people, yes. You guys, we have a, a brief report we want to check out. I want to get your thoughts on You guys at home, stay tuned to Let's Talk. We're going we're to check out this video and be right back, inshallah. Allah, Allah, I'm calling your name. A beggar came to the house of Aisha radiallahu anha, and her, uh, her slave opened the door, Barira radiallahu anha, and, and the beggar said, Oh, family of the Messenger of Allah, give me something. And she said, we have nothing. And Aisha radiallahu anha was listening to this. And Aisha said, who is it? 
Abu said, it's, it's a bigger, and all we have is a handful of barley for you to open your fast with. And it was at the time of Asr, and Aisha radiallahu anha said, give it, Allah will provide. And she gave it, come Maghrib time, there's no food. And Aisha radiallahu anha opened her fast with some water, and she began the Maghrib Salah, and Barira radiallahu anha is sitting there, and she's sarcastically, she's saying, you know, joking, and she's saying, oh, Allah will provide, Allah will provide. And then there's a knock on the door, and a man comes and he gives a goat as a gift. And Aisha radiallahu anha finished the Salah, and she said, oh, Barira, who is it? She said, it was a man who lives in the area. By Allah, he has never ever given us anything before. But today he bought us a goat. And Aisha radiallahu anha said, Oh, Barira, isn't that goat better than the handful of wheat that you had? And then she said something which really signifies the iman of these people. She said, I swear by Allah, None of you can be a true believer until it trust in Allah is stronger than that which he has in the palm of his hand. That which he has in the palm of his hand, you see it. But your trust in Allah is stronger than what you have in your hand. And we see the dunya, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our belief stronger in the akhirah than it is in the dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an iman which makes us realize the fallacy of the dunya and the deception of this dunya as well. Thank you guys for staying tuned. Really, that was an amazing video. Really a heart toucher. Sheikh Zakaria uh, is a beautiful, touching narration. Uh, SubhanAllah, what, what are your thoughts? I'm just, I'm just thinking of the last way he mentions that uh, you will never be a proper believer until what you have in your palm of your hand. You yeah. Know? Uh, and yeah. Uh, subhanAllah, it just shows you uh, the belief that they had. I mean, Hazrat Aisha is at the time of Asr. Why is it? You know, this hadith is to catch your heart. It's at the time of Asr. Maghrib is just a few uh, uh, hours away, you know. You've been fasting. You are hungry, you know. Yeah. It's almost like saying, you know, waiting for your order to come and that same order you need to give it to someone else. You know, this, this is difficult moments. It's moments <laughs> where you've been, where the test is at its peak. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's between uh, the, the, the decisions that you make and it shows and it teaches us uh, that uh, once you, 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 have, uh, you have taken out this, this world from your heart, you know, it, it no more, there's, no, th th there's no greatness in this world, you know. Yeah. All these things are deceit of going after uh, the, 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 the pleasures of your desire. So, mashallah, I, it's really a heart-touching yeah. hadith. And especially when it comes from the mother of Islam, our mother of Islam, Hazrat Aisha radiallahu yeah. ta'ala anha. And, you know, it's something beautiful for people to make, uh, for us to implement in our lives and, 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 and use it uh, to, to give out charity. Let us see who really has trust in Allah. That's what I felt from that. That's when reality hits and you have to give what you have in your hand. But let's, let's see who will really trust in Allah. Let's go to the studio audience, brother. Do you have any thoughts sir, about this concept of charity? Uh, yes, I do actually, brother. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam. Ashraf Muslim Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My name is uh, Hussam, Hussam al I'm a senior student at the Faculty of Islamic Sharia and Law English. Uh, the point that I'd like uh, to share here with my dear brothers and sisters and I start by, thing, by saying that uh, the good news is that uh, the concept of charity in Islam actually is a very comprehensive and a very wide one because the concept of charity actually comprises and encompasses uh, all good deeds that a Muslim can do and can perform. And this is why we, we can clearly find in the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, he said that your smile to your brothers and sisters is an act of charity. And uh, regarding this uh, teaching in particular, actually, uh, I know of a woman who is now, alhamdulillah, a revert Muslim. Uh, she used to study and to learn about Islam. And when she came ac across this uh, prophetic teaching, she said, I believe in a religion that rewards people just for smiling. And alhamdulillah, she impressed Islam and she's now a Muslim. <laughs> yes, and, also, and actually, this, this shows us okay. the humanity and, uh, 
and the tenderness of the heart of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Perfect. Because indeed, as Allah the Almighty described him in the Quran, he is a mercy to mankind. Because he knows that maybe uh, some of his ummah may not have the ability uh, to share with, the, with other Muslims and to give charity in the form of money. Right. So he actually gave us the glad tiding that yeah. we can also participate and contribute and share with our brothers and sisters, but in many forms. Yeah. And it's not only limited to this, actually. You can also see in other teachings in the, in the Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when you plant a tree, it's, an, it's, a, it's a form of charity and it's an act of charity. And also when you, when you feed your kids, uh, it's also an act of charity. And also, even when you have uh, a proper... Uh, uh, inter uh, physical relationship with, with, your, with your wife within the parameters of marriage, this, this is also an act of charity. And actually, this amazed and surprised uh, the companions of Prophet Muhammad. Okay. And, 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 they, and they exclaimed and they asked him, how is it he, ha he fulfills his own desire and he get, reward, get, get rewarded for this? He, he asked them, what if he fulfilled this desire in an illegal manner? Wouldn't it be a sin on him or not? They said, indeed, it would, be com it would be adultery or fornication. said the same because he performed it or he fulfilled this desire within the legal uh, well. parameters of Islam, he will be rewarded for this. And this actually is a very amazing and very beautiful uh, thing about Islam. Yes, sir. Thank you for those excellent points. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Mustafa Sheikh Zakaria, we know that the Quran was revealed uh, many years ago before we had uh, macroeconomics, macroeconomics, and fancy universities with, with big degrees, but still we see that uh, there is a special, specific division of distribution of wealth and charity uh, with specific guidelines. Uh, so where does this come from? What is the wisdom behind that? And what does an economic, uh, economist uh, today, professor of economics, have to say about, uh, uh, about this? This is a very good point. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, one of the companion went to the Prophet Sallallahu and they asked him for a charity. And he told him that Allah Azza wa Jal, that God divided the zakah or the charity for eight portions. And if you will be under any category of these eight portions, I will give you, definitely. And this tell us a very good point for a Muslim, for our household, for our families for all of us, that you should know specifically the rules of zakah. That the Prophet ﷺ and Allah mentioned, إِنَّمَا الزَّكَاةُ لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْعَامِلِينَ عَلَيْهَا I would like to get the, the verse right now. That Allah ﷺ mentioned that the zakah, it should be paid for the poor, for the needy, for the debtors, or even for the people who are working to collect zakah, and to free the slaves. Okay. In in our way, and even in our modern economy way, we are not we do not talk about uh, like if you have a lot of debts in your shoulder. Yeah. We don't have it in the United States. Yeah, we don't have you it. You don't have it in anywhere. Yeah. Except in Islam. Subhanallah. We have it. If you have a debt that Rasulullah mentioned for a lot of ahadith. Yeah. If one of his companions passed away, and he asked all of the companions. Do you know if your brother has any debt in his shoulder? And one of them, he said, yes. He must pay eight dinars. Subhanallah. And the Prophet wasallam he said, I will not pray on him. He would like to give us a message that you should to be free of the debt. Not even that, the, the, the companions, Sayyidina Abu Talha, told the Prophet wasallam I will pay for him. His eight dinars, I will pay it for him, but please, our Prophet, pray for him. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pray salatul janazah on our companions. This gives us the message that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if you have a loan, if you have a debt, I will pay it for you. If you don't have the capability to pay it, the Baytul Mal, or you can say like in the uh, United States, the Treasury Department yes. will pay for you. <laughs> Your Treasury Department, right? Yes, yes, they will pay for you. Right, okay. And, but they don't have it in the United States. Right. They, they don't have the system. You have to, you have to declare bankruptcy, oh, oh. and this is going to destroy your life. It's the opposite, Professor, yes. yes. It's completely the opposite. That's why I'm talking about it. 
we have a big difference between the charity in Islam and the charity in modern economy right now. Right, right. And if I could just get in here really quickly, you guys, and just share my experience in the United States, is what happens is you fall into debt, and the debt becomes in increasingly more difficult to yes. get out of. And yes. when you try, to, it's like you're swimming. Yes. And when you begin to drown, when you reach up for help, instead of having a hand, you have yes. someone put their head on yes. you and put you underwater more. Yes. Why? Because the debtors want more money faster, more money faster. Yes. And when you're looking around for help and, and oh, I can lend you money at a higher interest rate, at a higher interest and what happens, like you said, Professor, you declare banker, ba bankruptcy, where does that leave you? For seven, eight years, you're like a stranger, you can't re go anywhere, you can't rent a house, rent a... You uh, cannot even get a phone in your house, so you cannot rent a car. Right. You, it's it's going to destroy so, your life. Yeah, so it's the opposite of, of mercy in Rahman. Yes, yeah. in our Islamic way, yeah. Of Sharia, yeah. to help the people, to help the poor people. And this even is going to relieve our economy. Right. This is going to encourage you to start a business. Even if you have some losses, some right. debts, right. the Islam is going to help you. Right. And this is going to make me more, I have a lot of encouragement to start or initiate a business yeah. Yeah. for the poor people, for the area. Yeah, and benefit this, people. Yes, it's going to make a big difference here for the Islamic and in the economic in way. In general, That's inshallah. Right. Yes. Gentlemen, we're going to take, uh, take a, a quick break. You guys stay tuned for more Let's Talk. We'll be right back, inshallah. Subhana wa ta'ala Allah I'm calling your name have spilled over onto the... Escalated into violent clashes between police and protesters. Over the government's plan to avoid default. And we're also hearing of injuries on both... Journalist Charlie McGrath says the cuts will heap further suffering on ordinary people. ...for decades, but defense needs some... Rep <laughs> this is a serious and big storm. Join me as I explore issues pressing issues facing the Muslim world today. From the one-sided civil war in Syria to the genocide in Burma, from the Arab Spring to the elections in the U.S., and yes, even the Euro debt crisis in Greece. Honest reporting on a channel you can trust, and I won't leave an issue untouched. Don't miss the Ummah tonight with me, Malik, on your favorite channel for the TV. Subhanallah, you guys, thank you for staying tuned to Let's Talk, Sheikh Zakaria. We were just speaking in the break about the opposite there. Uh, here we have some mercy in Islam, whereas uh, the modern system, when you fall into debt, it's as if you're drowning and you reach up for someone to help and they just put you further uh, underwater. What does our religion say about, perhaps we can talk about, helping people in debt, helping poor people? This is part of our deen, isn't it? Yes. Uh, one of the things we should also remember is that, uh, like one of the audience had mentioned, a charity is not only giving money. Yeah, great. You know, they have that saying where they say, uh, if you give a man money for one day, you have, if you give a man money, you know, yeah. those, but you have fed him for one day. But if you teach him how to fish, yeah. <laughs> you have yes. fed him for the rest of his life. Yeah, teach yes. him something useful. You know? Yeah, this, I like that. This saying reminds me of the hadith where a person came to, to, to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a Bedouin, yes. and he asked the first time, and he was given. And then he came the second time, and then again he was given something. The third time when he came, Nabi Sallallahu got for him an axe, and Nabi Sallallahu told him to go and chop some wood, and then take that wood and go and sell it, and take the money from there. Yes. This, is the, 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 this is what it gives you to an understanding. Yeah. The, to, to, to initiate a business. A business. Yes. <laughs> so yes. basically, in the community, for example, teach people how to build. Right. Teach people how to sow. Teach people how to, how many people who are, who are begging is a good carpenter. Maybe you, you, he has yeah. a skill of using his hands. Yeah. Or he has a skill of drawing beautiful pictures, you right, know. Right. So basically also I think so one of the main things is that people should stop blaming. You know, sometimes we look and we say that the government is not giving enough. Yeah, yeah. Like we said, sometimes the government at the, in, the, in the introduction, the government cannot get to everybody, right, right. you know. Yeah. So basically as a community also, we should also try 
and you know sit down with people see what specialities they have you know this is one of the ways also that we mm. can increase because in South Africa we have certain organizations that have for example where they uh, teach women how to uh, how to cook you know and yeah. later on those women can open up small stalls of cooking places yeah, yeah. you know uh, they teach women how to sew right you know so those women can sew clothes right. uh, can sew some blankets right. you know so basically uh, the, this is also using from the hadith from the practices of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all the answers are there and uh, one thing I wanted to mention uh, thirdly is that yeah. if everybody gives his zakah the way he's supposed to give it, I don't think so that we would have had any people suffering on the yeah. surface of this earth. Dr. Muhammad Shalah always mentions that. Yes. Not even that. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned yeah. for this point, this point specifically. Yeah. He said that Allah Azza wa Jal, our God, gives the wealth for the people to cover their poor. Therefore, the rich people they have, if they pay their zakah, we will cover our poor yes, for our community. We have equilibrium yeah. in our community. We have balance in our, yeah, in our community. Yes, but let me tell you this. This happened with the Prophet ﷺ. One of the companions went to the Prophet ﷺ and he told the Prophet, let me talk to an American way. Oh, my Prophet, I have a dollar and I would like to bid for a charity. The Prophet ﷺ, he knows very well that this companion is poor. And he told him, pay it for yourself. <laughs> for the charity, pay it for yourself. Right. The companion would like, he doesn't to convince, I pay for myself, this is a charity. He said, pay it for yourself. And he, sa he said, oh my prophet, if I have a second dollar, what I should do? He said, pay it for your wife. <laughs> yes, and yeah. he asked him again, if I have one more dollar, told him, pay it for your kids. And they ask him again, if I have one more dollars, bid for your relative. Subhanallah. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has a merciful, he's a mercy. He has a mercy in his mind and he would like to help the person, the companion. He knows that he's poor. But he would like to say and expand the Islam for all of us. Yes, subhanallah. Islam not for the rich people. Even if you are poor, once you are feeding your kids, feeding your wife, feeding your family, you are have a charity with yourself. Yes, subhanAllah, yeah, of course. Yes, he would yeah. like to give, he would like to encourage all of us. It's the beauty of Islam. Not even that, Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Malik. Sayyidina Ka'b ibn Malik, when he was uh, behind, and he did in the war with the Prophet ﷺ. And he would like, ask the Prophet ﷺ, oh my Prophet, uh, I make a big mistake, and they would Allah Azza wa Jal for, to forgive me. I will pay all of my wealth for the sake of Allah. And the Rasulullah he said, no. Please, pay your charity as you want, but keep something for your family. Don't leave your family poor. The Prophet Sallallahu yes. knows that some people in emotional time, they would like to pay all of their income right. or pay their, all of their wealth. Well. He said, no. And Sayyidina, another uh, of the great companions, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu I have one daughter, and I would like to pay all of my zakah, all of my charity, I'm sorry, because we have difference between charity and zakah. Zakah, it's an obligation. But the charity, it may be more than the obligation. Right, right, right. extra. Yeah, an yeah, extra amount. And he said, I would like to pay all of my wealth for the sake of Allah. He said, no, keep, some of the of your wealth for all of your family and he didn't accept it from him sure. just to pay your charity and you should have your family if you passed away that your family is going to be rich Subhanallah. yes Subhanallah. this is the equilibrium in our, in our economy this yes. is the equilibrium in our society Subhanallah. this is the balance in our community Subhanallah. once we have that it's going to make a big difference in our economic way yes, Subhanallah. yes. thank you yes. so much let's go to the studio audience i think the brother muhammad in the back uh, had a qu comment. He's waving at me over there. He's saying, Brother Malik, I have, a qu I have a comment. Go ahead. Yes, I just want to say that, uh, Alhamdulillah, um, the point of the Sheikh Z uh, Zakaria, which is it's not enough to give the money. I have already made this point in my charity organization. So I am working in a charity organization called The Life Makers. We have a lot of projects in so many fields. And I was working on a project called Insan. It's mean human. 
uh, we our aim is to um, um, fighting escaping from uh, schools because of poverty so we wo the kids who were escaping from school because of poverty they don't have the money so we was uh, we were searching all over the my area about uh, the people in the schools who was uh, who were escaping uh, from the school because of poverty You're dropping uh, out of school yes yeah. and then uh, the e w w uh, and then the easy way is to give them the money but what did we do is we make a project to the, to them and stay uh, for a uh, uh, project like uh, a small shop or a small market and we stayed si uh, six month, uh, months with them uh, and we take uh, two things from them. The first thing is um, uh, to uh, let her son go back to the school and the second thing is that they help us uh, for uh, dealing with the other families. So I mean the easy, the easy way is to give him uh, just to give him the money, but we was we were um, making a project with them. Yeah, so Allah. This yeah the easy way just to give the money, but yes. what you're doing is being active and involved it's an, with them and hard way. And following through yes. with your time. It's like a human atta a human piece exactly. to that. Thank you, brother. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, Sheikh Zakaria, Professor Mustafa, I feel like when we talk about economics, not we, but the general conversation about economics, there's no more human element. But look at the wisdom of the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, and all the hadith you guys are quoting. There's a human element to this life and giving money and helping. But when, we t when people talk about economics today, they're just speaking about figures. And there's no room for yes. poor people yes. and people that have debt. And this is, I think, a, a weakness in the, in the global economy, of course. Obviously based on interest and also there's no human element, which is why it has failed us, I believe, which we saw with the Occupy Wall Street yes. and the American fiscal crisis and cliff yes. and mortgage crisis. Over the there. question is when is, is, when is Islamic economics and the deen of Allah going to dominate the economic world as well? Is this in the, in the future, inshallah? For sure. I think all of the Arab Springs that you, we are facing right now in our countries here uh, is going to pay or is going to build for our economy. But we have a lot of problems right now in our economy. Right now we have, we are in developing countries. We do not have any database. You don't have any criteria for working people. Our unemployment rate is very high, almost 20%. And we are in debt. Also. And we are in debt here. And the people are suffering. Yeah. But for your experience to have a very good Islamic way or Sharia way in Islamic economics, at least I, ha I would like to have some standards. Right. If we have some standards, for example, if you went for any bank here in Egypt or South Africa or any countries and ask him, I would like to have a musharaka way, a partnership, and I would like to have a partnership. And if their bank would like to give me the money, but I don't have the capability to show them that I am honest man. Right. I am a trustworthy. Right. If I don't have these capabilities, the bank may lose his money. And therefore, you may find some in Islamic banking system, they have a lot of conditions to give you the money. Right. Because they are suffering for right. the people. Right. If they are cheating the system, right. it's going to be collapsed. And we have a, a lot of stories in the United States about Madoff. Madoff oh, story. this was a huge cost for yeah, this, this was very bad. Did you we are talking about almost $700 billion. Of all people crying. So all the people are crying and they lost their investment over there. That's very why. Bad. Not even that. Let me give you this story. This happened with the Prophet ﷺ. Because you mentioned about the economic way and our Islamic way. Adam Smith, uh, he, we said in economics, he is the father of economics. Okay. Adam Smith write his book in 1776. His book, its name is The Wealth of Nation. Okay. He said the poor are poor because they are, do not, they are not working. Therefore, he believes that the poor are poor because they do not work. In Islam way, we declare or we understand that we will have a poor because their nature, they will not be able to have the capabilities like another people to work on. Right. The Sittina Zainab, the wife of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, she went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and she told him, I have a lot of wealth. Is that okay to pay my charity or even pay my zakah to my husband, Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? 
See what the Prophet said. He said, yes, it is accepted as zakah. You will pay it for your husband. Because in Islam, the husband should, should cover right. every expense in our house. Right. But for the woman, this is not a mandatory. This is not a, an obligation for her. She can have her independent wealth. Yes, right. completely. Yeah. Definitely. But in this case, because the Prophet ﷺ knows that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is poor, Right. And his wife, she can pay her zakah to her husband. And this is accepted. Not a specific case for Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, but this in general. For any family, the wife can pay her zakah to her husband to help him. Now what happened in our economy? If we do that in our families, we starting to have a very good unit yes. in our economy. Good satisfaction for our family. And this is going to help us in our economy, in our community, in our nation at large. Subhanallah. Yes. Thank yes. you so much for your yeah. time, no Professor no Mustafa no Sheikh Zakaria. We're actually out of time. Did you have a comment? Did you want to make it in about a minute? Go ahead. Just a minute. Just to emphasize on yeah. the story which he said that the rich people, what they said about the poor people. Yes. And I remember there is a story where, if I'm not mistaken, it was the queen of Switzerland or the queen of one of the countries, and it was said to her, that the people, the poor people, do not even have bread to eat. It was France, and yeah. It was, it was France. France. I yeah. know this. Go ahead. And she said that if they don't have bread, then let them eat cake. <laughs> <laughs> and this, I think, I think after, the, I think what this was, a, where they, uh, the French Revolution, I believe, where they cut her head off. Where eventually, they cut their head off. Because right? it irritated the people. So, subhanAllah, <laughs> just to end up with this here is yeah. that, uh, you know, we need to go back into the practices of the peace awesome. Every answer is there. And let us look in, because there were Sahaba that had money, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Hazrat Uthman radiallahu an, and yeah. how they had spent uh, their money on uh, the, 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 the poor, and how they had given, and how they had brought the community together. So it is also upon those people that have money to, inshallah, spend it out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you, brother, for, remind, for wrapping it up so nicely and for reminding me about that historical fact, <laughs> subhanAllah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I really thank you for your time. Barakallah, thank Fikam, you so I appreciate much. it. Mm. I appreciate it. And Thanks so much. And thank you so much. And you guys in the studio audience, I didn't get you guys enough. I apologize. Next time, inshallah, thank you for coming to another edition of Let's Talk. And you guys at home, thank you for watching Let's Talk. I hope you benefited, inshallah. Until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How perfect my eyes and I praise Great.